Give us any chance, we'll take it. Read us any rule, we'll break it. We're gonna make our dreams come true. Welcome to Nat Finetta Podcast about eight seasons in a row. I'm Lisa Fernandes and... I am Chris Drywardna. Hello. And we're about to review Laverne's show, Move In, an episode from season four of the show, directed by Joel Zwick and written by Paula A. Roth, which gives some facts about them, don't you, Chris? A couple of facts here. So Paula A. Roth, in addition to having written The Bridal Shower, the second annual Shots Talent Show, and having co-written the festival, she is also a Libra. So says IMDb. Currently at her ninth episode, she's got four more to go, and uh, she worked on a few other projects in the future, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about after I've done a bit more further research. As to Joel Zwick, he returns. Now, word on the street is he got himself a BA at Brooklyn College in the television department, then a master's degree in theater in 1967, so good on you, sir. This is currently his third episode, which means he has 30 left in the run of the show. Oh my God. Dun, dun, dun. Um... He later went on to direct the 2004 Fat Albert movie, which I do not doubt was because he had successfully directed My Big Fat Greek Wedding, and the producers thought, hey, he made a movie with the word fat in the title popular. Let's get that guy. I I am actually kidding. But but, but yeah, I do find that amusing that he he did uh, did My Big Fat Greek Wedding, and a few years later, he gets Fat Albert. I have not watched in a long, long time either. I have not even thought of that movie in a while. I've I've seen neither of them. I've seen my big fat, big fat group running multiple times. So. It's okay. It's good. Not my absolute favorite romantic comedy goes up there. All right. All righty. And this is what the episode is about. After the girls wake up to argue about their sleeping habits, they're further disturbed by one of Frank's bi-monthly burglar drills. Anna quickly arrives to help Frank whip the whipped cream off of himself and provides a convenient jumping off point for Shirley's flashback to the year the girls moved in together. Six months after high school graduation and just after they secured their ball capping jobs, Harmony managed to find the girls a place in his building, when formerly occupied by a guy who trained goats. The girls are immediately in love with the place, and not even the abrupt appearance of Lenny and Squeaky can dare their enthusiasm when they start building a nest together. But two robots tend to part the girls are good. Frank's refusal to let Laverne move in with her best friend and Shirley's mother's and sisters as Shirley moved to Los Angeles with her after a vacation in California turns into a permanent stay. What do you think about this one? Poodle skirts. Yeah, poodle skirts. So cute. Poodle skirts. Those are so cute. The hair, the poodle skirts, the sweaters. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. class ring from, from Carmine. I am not at all surprised. Um, on, the, on the other hand, um, Frank. Boundaries, buddy. Yeah. Frank. Jeez. God. This is him and his most overbearing in this episode. He is overbearing out the wazoo in this one to the point where you're like wondering why he's so afraid of Laverne leaving the nest. Like, I wonder if it kind of connects to what he feels about Josephine's death because we never find out how she died. Right. Just that she died and Laverne was young when it happened. And it happened before she even met Shirley. So that kind of, that might link into his protectiveness besides his old world Italianness. Up. But geez, he's overbearing. Let her go. Let her go. Yep. But I will oh, say. Well, but it... Go ahead. I was go just going to say, at the very least, they, they have a system. Step one, you surprise them. And step two, kick them where it hurts. Yeah, which is a great system. Kick them where it hurts with baseball bats and or steel tip shoes. Yes. That's what will win the day. That's what will win the day, kids. Yeah, it would do much better than Shirley having a spoon and Laverne using the whipped cream. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a trying. Yeah, it's it could be worse. They are trying at least. But I, I God. Frank's response: This is the way you defend yourself. What am I, your dessert? <laughs> I love the end is right behind him, all in her curlers and her mud mask. And this is the first time he's ever seen her in her curlers and her mud mask. And his reaction to that. Yep. Uh uh, yeah, it's like, this is how you look every night? Uh, yes. Yeah. Is that the way I look? <laughs> Girls, take a lesson. You want to look good in the day? You got to look up to like this at night. It, uh, but I love he yeah. tells her, he still says he loves her and gives her a kiss. Yeah. And then and it says, don't, don't ever let me see you like that again. <laughs> yes. Heaven knows where he goes after this, because after that scene, he just disappears from mm-hmm. the room. Either he walked back to the pizza bowl dressed like that and managed to get himself arrested, or he sacked out on the floor somewhere because Shirley goes to sleep on the couch. 
So heaven knows where he is and what happened. Maybe he went up to Edna's apartment. I don't know. But only Frank. TV magic. I love TV magic. Yeah, TV magic. magic. I loved uh, Laverne's shot. Of, it's a sex maniac. Yeah. It's so burst in. Oh, God. And Cheryl trapping herself by tucking herself in too tight. My mom loved that whole bit of them yeah. arguing like sisters on yeah. the, about the sleeping habits. Yes. You dribble. <laughs> Try not to you drown dribble. yourself. Uh, we ha- we never oh. hear Laverne snoring when she's supposed to be asleep at all. That's, but, yeah, but that's... Well, okay, but in this scene, that's the clue. She's not actually asleep. Yeah, exactly. That's, that, that's for the future to determine, though. True. Um, um, quick, before I... Because this, this note is star- glaring me in the face, I have to point out, the cat picture yes. is still on the bedroom wall. <laughs> that horrified cat picture that you keep noticing. Hashtag mood. Yeah. Yes, hashtag mood. I wonder if Shirley painted that. We find out that Shirley paints later on in the series. I wonder if she drew that. It's possible mm. that she did. Hmm. And then and she actually pasted a like a wig on it. Yes. For some reason. Why I don't know, but she did. Yeah. And you saw the uh the Fabian pictures are still there, right? Above their beds? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And there's multiple other little artifacts that likes this plate that Jake the Snake gave Laverne is on the wall. Oh no. Oh god. Yes, it is. Uh well at least he's being rehabilitated. Uh, at least he's learning a useful skill. Anyway. <laughs> We learned that, by the way, that Frank does this every other month for some reason. Because he's that paranoid about Laverne losing her ability to uh, whack the hell out of a dude with a bat. Amazing they don't have their bats by their beds when they sleep, either. I'm, yeah, surprised by that. That was, that was surprising in of itself. And Laverne's, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, boy. So then we slide right into the flashback. And we see the girls... Right at the cusp of 18, or they're the 17 or 18 here. They've just graduated high school. They've just gotten their jobs at shots. And they are making their first move toward independence. And everything about that scene is so cute. Oh, they're all boy, so, gee whiz, so, it's so adorable. Yes, actually it is. It's literally, my, literally my note about this is, Oh, look at the babs. Look at those wigs. They're so cute. That's the actual line I have. Nice. That's the actual line. That's the actual quote and locations that I have from me. I made. Um, Shirley is so excited. She can just see the glamour in this place, even though it's so dingy. She's just picturing the future where she can hold elegant dinner parties when they finally get a uh, refrigerator. <laughs> Which I think is so cute. You can't rub this in here, in there. Their idea of them living off of Kool Aid. Oh God! And I love the enthusiasm yeah. they say that line with too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shirley's so excited. Shirley's more excited than Laverne, as per usual. But they're both so excited about the whole situation. This notion mm-hmm. that they're gonna maybe be able to uh, create this house, beautiful house, out of this yep. basement apartment. Hey, if it was, if it was good enough for a very talented goat, it's good enough for them. Yes. Carmine might have had a bond with that goat, which I think is hilarious. You and know, also I, the fact that he can do animal impressions. You know, finally, I get it. I understand now why he's so horrible. That goat noise—he's related to Black Philip, isn't he? This is the this is this is this is a side boot to the to the to this is a precursor to the witch. I'm calling it now. Don't sign that contract, girls. Don't sign that legal document. <laughs> the girls are souls. Oh man. Oh goodness. I love Carmine's wistful, yeah, I'll miss him. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. I was going to say, you know, the, the whole thing of them having to get all this stuff I thought was interesting, too. And immediately they turned yeah. to Carmine. It's like, what do I look yeah. like? A Montgomery yeah. Ward? Which, which again, again, Carmine. Yeah. Buddy, pal, listen, asshole. Um, the, your, <laughs> your, your connections. Connections. You want to talk about, you want to tell us a little bit about that? You, you're talking to what, that guy, uh, Joey, corner of the street there, his uh, trench coat. He's yeah. got a couple of good, nice Rolexes in there. All right, what about the, what about that guy? What about what about the, you know Bobby? Bobby Joe is got a he's got a good truck. He's got full of uh, stereos, TVs. What's going, what's going on here? Yeah. This is how we learn that their entire apartment is furnished by Carmine's ill-gotten gains. At least, it, it, likely it is anyway. Some of it. Yeah, the majority of it. Right. Uh, Frank might have helped out a little bit. Yep. Maybe surely brought some stuff uh, from a place with the mother. Mm-hmm. 
but that, uh, that would explain yes. the old busted couch. Yes, it would. Yeah, yep, yeah. So that all came from somewhere. I'll give you a kiss for a toaster. You got it. Will you give me for a gas range? Oh Carmine. boy, Carmine. Uh, did, I love when Shirley says, you know, when it's like, what are we, what are we going to do with Carmine, you know, to convince him? And she goes, cover your eyes, Laverne. Yep. And this is Shirley Feemy Shimmy. Shirley Feemy Shimmy. This is, this is shimmy. The, the Shimmy, the, the, okay, the shovey, squeaky Shirley Shimmy. Cause, cause that's, yes. cause that is, because at some point I'm just adding all these more adjectives to Shirley as the show progresses. I had that from a few episodes <laughs> ago too, actually. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, apparently, Carmine has been living in this building for a while. I don't know if he lived there with his folks and they moved out and left him without apartments. I don't know if he was emancipated. We know that he went through high school with the girls at the same time, so he's the same age as they are. But he's been living there for a while. So, I don't know, maybe right after uh, high school he landed the apartments. It's mm-hmm. interesting to know. Interesting possibilities. Very interesting possibilities. I, I was wondering about that too. It's like, okay, he's been there a bit, but he's about the same age or is, is probably the same age. So it's like, hmm, yeah. I wonder. And he went through high school dating Shirley. So they've, they've known each other at least since they were uh, freshmen. So, so what, was, what, was the, what, was the, what was the first landlady's name again? Mrs. Haver, Haver something? Havenworth. Havenworth. Haven thank worst. you. He wasn't sleeping with her, was he? God, I hope not. He would have been only 17. God, oh, I hope not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I hope not. No, I'm not going to let that thought enter my head. Instead, we're going to go to what is technically the boy's first door entrance. Shirley's saying, I was the only one who could put up with his strange animal noises, and bam, and they come. Yep. Oh, Gosh. God. They, I, they are yeah. so uncool. That was your exact remark when we watched this episode. Uh, like, oh no, boys! You're so uncool. <laughs> uh, those are exact comments. <laughs> Michael oh, is just man. committing to teenage Lenny so hard. His eyes are enormous. His mm-hmm. hairstyle is slightly different. His clothing actually is better than what he ends up wearing as an adult, which is interesting to me in of itself. And his voice keeps cracking, so he's just barely through. He's just barely going through puberty. Yep, yep. Which, which is I mean, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a late bloomer. Yeah. He's tall, but a late bloomer. Yeah, yep, yep, exactly. And it's just funny in of itself. He just commits to it so hardcore. Yep. And Squiggy is just wholeheartedly Squiggy. His outfit when he comes in the girl's apartment the second time is amazing. I oh. love that outfit, the sweater vest. It's so Absolutely, good. it's so good. Yeah. Oh god. I love it. Uh, he, he looks like he's going to grow up to become the uh, guidance counselor from Bob's Burgers at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Frond. My note about the difference between them is that Lenny looks like an embryonic version of who he's going to become. Squee just hatched that way. Because <laughs> <laughs> Squee oh, looks exactly that. the same way that he does as, as a grown adult. He dresses the exact same way. He sounds the exact same way. There's a little tiny little inflection where his voice is a little bit higher in pitch. But Lenny is just squeaking all over the place. And yep. And we fight, Laverne. Mis- we snuck around after you. <laughs> 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 we heard you doing that sexy schmazzle song you always do. <laughs> oh, just, my God. And then they think that they're trying to seduce them. And they, they eat they, goat they, chow in front of them. Yeah, they, they have the God. goat chow for a little chow for us. It's, and they're fortified. Yes, they're fortified. Yeah. The nutritious and delicious. I de- um, go ahead. I defile you to look me in the eye yeah. and tell me you can resist. I can resist you. She'll say whatever I tell her to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, he just gets more and more encouraged by the double bank out. Oh, <laughs> and then, God. Uh, then you notice that that jacket is pre lone wolfed. They managed yes. to remember that there was no writing on the back of it at this point in time. So good on them for actually having some continuity. I wonder if uh, Michael comes into the uh, wardrobe department and cries foul because he's the kind of person that would keep track uh, of that because he's actually a very good yes. writer. I'm actually wondering who is keeping an eye on continuity because <laughs> at this point, somebody... At the, this house actually has more continuity in it than you would expect for a show that keeps 
following up its own continuity. But Laverne does, you know, sign the deed, sign her agreement as Carmelita Malblato, which is great. Mm-hmm. That is such a great fake name. Laverne, you chicken! God. Oh. I had to actually have a distant relative named Carmelita. There you go. Yeah, she was the one that was in, uh, we suspect, was the one that was in a couple of Alfred Hitchcock movies. Oh, cool. It's neat. Yeah. It's incredibly neat. So, yeah. now Laverne starts promising Frank that she will do anything as long as he will let her move out. Yep. She'll you come over you... to cook for him twice a week. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yep. you know, he wants his muffin to be happy, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, but she does not come over twice a week to cook for him. That does not take place. Nope. So he kind of suffers there. <laughs> uh, and then he has to threaten her with physical bi- violence to get her back down again, Frank. Yeah. Frank. Frown. I have a big frown. Not the open hand, Frank. Not cool, dude. Don't do that. Not cool. Uh, I love... The fact that Full Foster's conception of a slightly younger Frank is just darkening his mustache and darkening his hair, completely forgetting the fact that during the first few seasons he did not have a mustache. Uh, well, it probably was. It probably was real, and so it wasn't something put on. Yeah, so yeah, it was exactly. It wasn't. It wasn't. So you didn't uh, want to shave it and then have to regrow it. Probably could yep. have done it because of the production schedule. Thus. So then we get a little bit of physical comedy with the girls wrestling with the uh, wallpaper. Yep. My, 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 my mother recognized she was watching the episode and goes, oh, it's that old wallpaper. That was the hard stuff. The yes, stuff that was difficult to put on there. Yes, yes I recognize that kind of stuff too. That actually had to scrape uh, the walls of my uh, house, get some old 1940s, 1950s wallpaper off and repaint the walls. Ugh. So I know their pain. <laughs> I know their pain. And of course, Laverne gets the great line. It's probably some gorgeous hunk of man when the phone starts ringing, and then in come the boys. Hello. It's another one of the great hello. Another, another one of the great hello gags. <laughs> Squiggy just insulting the crap out of Shirley's mom. Uh, calling her a bimbo, S- no less. Yes. You stupid bimbo. <laughs> Shirley, it's your mother. <laughs> <laughs> the scream. <laughs> I know. I know. Which then goes and into. Then- the interesting yeah. thing that because Shirley is obviously has been made clear is super codependent and gosh yes. dang her mom is too because Lily yes. cannot allow does not want to allow Shirley from being her own kind of happy like that that's yeah. that's that's the thing and like we consider you know mother knows worse that there was definitely an implication that she was having to lie as much as she could as much as she could stomach to her own mother to just keep her off her back so that she exactly. could just live her own life exactly and the, uh, Lily continuing, so she's got she's got a controlling mom. Laverne kind of has a controlling dad. And one of the two of them want to break free, and then just the heartbreaking notion that she has to go to California, and the two of them standing there trying to convince themselves that it, the apartment's awful, and then Laverne delivering the wonderful line, "I want this done more than anything in the whole wide world." Yep. And just, and that becomes extra poignant in the next couple of seasons. Trust me. Mm. Hmm. That becomes extra poignant. Extra poignant. And for once, we get an intact Eddie Mecca musical number. We get a whole intact song. I can't imagine how much it costs to keep it in, but yes, Carmine gets to sing I'll Be Seeing You. In all the old familiar places. Okay, Carmine, keep telling yourself that once you're in hell. <laughs> He's being perfectly marginally decent in this episode. Let's give him credit. Okay. Let's give him a little bit of credit. A little bit of credit. Just a tiny bit. Yeah. I did love, I love the uh, uh I, I did love, want yeah. to point out the uh Laverne trying to pull in on the singing and it gets the glare and then he picks right back up yeah. from where she left off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the second time that the show did a gag like that. Uh there's a wonderful gag like that in the dentist episode. Where Edna really gets into Carmine's singing personnel and she always takes over the number. Which gets cut from the DVD edit. Oh, At least this one's intact. Oh. Yeah. Um, I love that Shirley's saying that the number was so sad and it depressed her even more. And then Carmine goes, when your girlfriend's walking out of your life, you don't sing trip boats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then they try to cheer her up. And the boys 
entrance and scene here is perfect. It is. Uh, almost all of their dialogue is worth mentioning. Mm-hmm. From uh, Shirley declaring that there were no memories and the boy saw me, that that's true. Yeah. Just, to Squiggy. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, just the, 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 the she's so right and sorry, and then you know, yeah. snort. <laughs> yes, yes. The Squiggy's immortal. Please don't leave, Shirley Feeney. You was my last chance at a short woman. Oh, God. I love that so much. Oh, and Carmine's look at that. I wonder how many times he yeah. beat the crap out of those two in high school. Oh, God. Well, we know that he did indeed bully them, so at one point, so he probably did shove them in the locker a few times. And Squiggy was not deadered. Yep. No, Squeaky was not deadered. And he, then the prophetic line that foreshadows the hell of season eight. Goodbye, Laverne. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, but without her, what good are you? Prophecy. Uh... Prophecy. But we'll get there. And I won't say what happens, but we'll get there. <sighs> well, uh, the time Season to go say they can, they can go they can go say goodbye to the luggage then and then we'll just Yes! Her luggage is living too! Where will this madness end? <laughs> <laughs> uh every line in that scene is iconic. Every line. Everyone. I gotta say, um, Shirley's expression when Carmen says he'll be waiting for her in the car in the back seat, it kind of was like, yeah. hmm, that was uh that was interesting. That just kind of put a little interesting rub in the relationship. Now, obviously, as she got older, she was more into the smooching and makeouts and stuff, but yeah. uh yeah, 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 yeah. But it just I don't know. Did that did that did you pick up on that? The little ener- the energy shift there where she's like, I don't know if I want that right now, or just yeah. I don't want that at all yeah 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 there was kind of like a micro expression on her face that i kind of noticed a little bit but you know at this point we just saw watch them make out for like standing up for like 10 minutes in the this is the cemetery so we know how she feels about making out with him now that's yeah so, yeah times change yeah times change yeah times change um, indeed yeah. she's an innocent kid here and she's a little she's still innocent uh Four seasons in, but uh, not that in the sense anymore. Right, right. And Penny acts out Laverne's heartbreak so well here. When she storms off the ladies' room and Phil Foster and Cindy Williams have this beautiful scene where Frank makes Shirley his daughter in an honorary way mm-hmm. and offers to be her pop and offers to look out for her mm-hmm. and lo- look out for the both of them and be their guardian. While also letting them live in the apartment together. Yeah. It's, that's really lovely. Yeah, my note here is, Lisa, why are my eyes still leaking? <laughs> I thought my I I thought I'd recovered off. from a visit to the cemetery, but no. No, I hadn't. It was oh. more more feelings, more emotions. The found family, that type of found family kind of stuff just, I don't know, it just gets me. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's because I, I, yeah. don't, I don't connect with my extended family at all. Oh, yeah. God. I've probably, some of them are probably going to listen to this at some point. So, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my family doesn't speak to me. <laughs> uh, my note is all Marshallian sentiment. Yeah. That's my note on this whole scene. It's really good. It's really nice. And the way that he loves Shirley, Shirley has become his daughter over the years, probably ever since uh, the two of them met when she was a six year old girl, just after he lost Josephine. And he kind of took her in and made her a part of the family uh in response to her father never being there yeah always being at sea always being gone or when he's there he's a scamster yeah we never get to see uh, frank interact with jack do we no we don't oh man i'd love to see that moment because that's one of those things I, i it's you know i mean you know how it is it is where you know there's like a parent to parent discussion and when the good parent sees a bad parent there's a certain undercurrent animosity which can be yes, really it's kind in- of tension exactly it can be really engaging to watch and also just i i want to see what kind of death glare frank gives because you know as much as he has his problems as a parent there's a certain amount of abandonment he, a certain abandonment he will never do he will always be there for laverne and he will always be there for shirley 
And there are probably so many times that Jack has just been like, well, got to go. And it's like your your daughter needs you right now. She's, you know, her mom yelled at her or she's doing bad at school or something. And Frank has been the guy to have to pick up the pieces. And yeah, but again, you know, yeah. these opportunities just never, never get lived up to. Um, but uh, sadly, but yeah, no, it's but it's all good. Surely because is part of the fam and they get to live together. And Laverne is very happy. And I. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Laverne, Laverne, come on out! No, I'm just gonna live in here. She's in the in the girls' room. Yeah. Uh, oh man. Yeah. But uh, I do like she comes out with the toilet paper she was using for for uh, for tissues for her eyes and hugs Frank and you're making me wet. Use this. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, he wipes yeah, yeah. he wipes his face with the roll, not with a piece. Yeah. Yeah, it's all wrong. I love Laverne's responding line to that. And she tells her, no, we're going to live together. She goes, in the ladies' room? <laughs> <laughs> uh, everything about us great. And then we get the little tag scene, which is really quiet and sweet, uh, where Shirley is, has finished her story. She's going to tell the story of how Boo Kitty got its name, which I would die to hear. Yes. But we don't get to hear it. And she see, realizes everyone's asleep. Laverne fell asleep while eating whipped cream. <laughs> the can in bed with her and she just sighs and grabs some blankets and pillows and goes off to sleep on the couch and then it turns out and then Laverne was still awake and they go off to Nine Nine Land it's yep. a cute little it's a cute little scene yeah I, I just I just want more stories about Boo Boo Kitty in general I want the comp- long complicated story about how she got her name and I want to hear about the times that her and Jeffrey eloped I, I need this <laughs> uh and squeeze moths officiated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay, this is, I think it's grading time. Yeah, uh, you you take this one. I'm going to give this a solid seven and a half. Right an eight. Right an eight. I'm going to give it an eight. A really cute. Really adorable. Really nicely written. I I have to go into a nine. Screw it. Really cute. Really nicely written. Uh, fun acting. Uh, the way the everybody commits to acting these teenage roles, the teenage versions of their characters, is really fun. Uh, Frank's uh, overbearingness is addressed in a sweet way, and then we realize that in the end, he loves these girls. And that's why he's there every day. He loves those girls. So, yeah, that's what it is for me. Yeah, I think I'm going to also give it like a, I think I'm going to give it an eight, a solid eight, because it's uh, it's definitely a must watch for people who are into kind of like the backstories of the show and to the characters. It, they, yes. As you said, everyone commits to the younger versions of their characters. There's um, like, as I've kind of said in the past, there's sort of like these episodes that in my mind, I'm sort of thinking, OK, if this was going to be redone what are the ones that I would like that, that need to keep a little something from it or keep a lot of it from it? Um, this is one of those episodes. There's a lot of really strong material and, and it confirms the, that, you know, Carmine is an evil goat hell spawn as I've, I've always known. So, okay. Yeah, that's good. I give it points for that. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it, seriously speaking though, it was really cute. There was really good emotional content and um, for, and honestly, that's the thing I also love the emotional stuff for both Laverne and for Shirley in this episode comes off great. And sometimes, you know, and especially I've noticed with like the last couple of seasons, it's, it'll be one character or the other. Here, it's about their friendship and about keeping that friendship together. And yes. so they both have their own, their own cross to bear and their own sort of obstacle that must be overcome. And that was, I thought, was really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really sweet episode. It's about how strong their bond is and about how deeply Frank feels for both of them. And how the boys orbit around them. And it's really beautiful. It's a really lovely little, really lovely little episode. Yeah. Cool. Anywho, with that and with all that taken care of, I guess we can just say thank you again so much for listening to Night After Night. And if you would like to know more, please join us on Night After Night Pod on Facebook, Tumblr, WordPress, or Patreon. Or Night After Night PC on Twitter. And if, uh... If you're just if you're thinking to yourself that you know who would want to live in a who would want to live in a cellar, then you know, hey, if it's good enough for Laverne and Shirley and a very talented goat and maybe possibly the Hellspawn Carmine Ragusa, then it's probably good enough for you too. Just you know, sign your actual name on the lease, or otherwise you might get identity fraud cases charges against you. I don't know. Oh my! Next episode, 
the boys trying to go out with the girls, but the girls are just in going out with veterinarians, and the veterinarians are interested in going out with, well, you'll find out. This is dinner for four. Well, hopefully this episode will be another ray of sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a Ray DeValley Jr. joke. Yeah. Yeah, I know it was. I knew it was. I was waiting for the audience to catch up. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody.